FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Hi, everyone. My name is Heather Havenwood, and welcome to your emergency financial survival briefing of the United States. I'm, um, and I'm going to be doing an interview today. So if you are a solo entrepreneur, an independent entrepreneur, anybody in the gig economy, as well as a small business owner here in the United States, please stay on and, and actually share this with other people in your community, other small businesses. Okay. And when I mean small business, small business is really the, the health and the breathing mechanism of America today. So it's truly important that we really make sure that our small businesses in America today are going to be breathing through this extremely financial time, um, survival time. So I'm going to be bringing on a dear friend of mine, Carrie. Let's Carrie. Now you're on screen. Hey guys. Hi Carrie. Hey there. It's great to be with you. I'm super excited to have you on. So guys, I want to explain to you what's, what we're going to be talking about today. Um, w- there is a lot of things that got passed on um, last Friday with the stimulus package, but there are many tiers that got passed. It wasn't just this blank check thing. There's all these different kinds of tiers. There's state, there's federal and SBA. There's literally different things. There's emergency loans. There's emergency grants and so much. And so the last, what, three days, Carrie, you and I have been scouring the internet. You had the audacity to read the bill. Cray, cray, you are, but that's who you are. So what we're going to do is he's going to be going into the details of these different kinds of packages. I'm not going to call them loans because some are, some aren't. Some are grants. Some are just gifts of the government. And there's a lot of um, uh, confusion out there. Even lawyers and accountants don't know exactly know what's going on. So for the last three days, uh, Carrie and I have been going back and forth. I've been asking what I call the dumb questions, the questions that I would say, the average business owner doesn't know, and he's been answering them. And then him and I have actually been going through the processes together of of applications. So I think this is really, really important. Every single one of my dear friends are entrepreneurs. I just got off the phone an hour ago with a dear friend of mine. He is a doctor of 48 employees of pain management. You know, a uh, big company and he's had to furlough 20 employees today. Like it was a rough day. So, um, and I've been giving him and feeding him things and they've been helping him. And so he said, Hey, you should really be out there sharing this with other people too. So that is what we're doing. So I'm explaining to you who Carrie Lutz is. He's been a student of Austrian economics since 1977 while attending Pace University and he stumbled upon an extensive cache of Austrian, I can't even read that, economic literature in a dark, musty, abandoned section of the school's library. Don't even know what that means. So after graduating from the New York Law School, he became an attorney and lifelong serial entrepreneur. So he's a financial guy. Now, after the 2008 financial collapse and the continued global economic deterioration, Kerry realized people needed a reliable source for accurate information. And that's what we're doing today. Believing that inflation would eventually run rampant, which we're most likely going to be dealing with soon, he dedicated himself to helping people protect and preserve their wealth. And you are head of the Financial Survival Network, correct? Yeah, you got it, Heather. Okay. And yeah, so it's it's really great to be here. It's really serious times. Yes. So many small businesses are on knife's edge. And if we can help a number of them get through it, then we'll have done our job. Absolutely. That's that's what we're here to do. I'm actually going to be having a phone call here in a couple hours with a doctor, an MD, who's got a general practice in San Antonio. And he was referred to me by my other friend who's a doctor. And he's like, please help him. You know, um, so everyone's freaked out. And the, the, the challenge with all that is that uh, there's a lot of misinformation happening. You know, at the end of the day, this stimulus package just was signed on Friday, late Friday, actually. Um, and information still being brought out. As you know, Carrie, I walked, went to three banks today uh, to talk about one particular uh, loan program that was talked about in, in the Congress bill, in the bill, and all the bankers are like, we don't know what you're talking about. You know what I mean? So 
there's just a lot of information. Our job here today is to help you as much as we possibly can. All right, so let's kind of dive in. My job is to keep a macro view on it, and Carrie's going to dive in a lot to the minutia. So let's start with the individuals. You know, what's in it for the individual who's not in business? It is the $1,200. Is that right, Carrie? Yep. Yep. Basically, $1,200 if you're a married couple uh, and you're under a certain income level, generally $75,000 each, then you'll each get $1,200 and then $500 each for each dependent that's uh, listed on your tax return. So it could uh, be a substantial amount of money for a married couple. My partner, business partner, he's got uh, six children and a wife. So he's, you know. All right, not, so ki those kids are feeding back to him, yeah. finally. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's a okay. small down payment. <laughs> yeah, right, small down payment. Okay, so real quickly though on that, because something I learned last night, you and I are talking about, if you, you need to make sure that you have to file your 2018 taxes, correct? That is correct. That's an issue, okay. There's no, you can't really tell whether it's going to tie it up or not, but they're going to base these payments on 2018 on your return. So if you haven't filed a return, the IRS is telling you right now, file it ASAP. Yeah. These are probably going to go out in the next couple of three weeks. Although the way this thing is moving, Heather, it wouldn't surprise me if it goes out early next week. I've never seen the government move as quickly on anything. Um, when I was in New York in 9-11, we had all these programs and they took months to get. And, right. uh, and so New York might actually have an advantage here because they still have that infrastructure in place for their grants and loans that took place after 9-11. Okay, so this is moving fast, but let's get down to the business here. If you're an independent contractor, freelancer in the gig economy, let's start there. These programs can work for you. There are programs in this bill that will help you. Gig economy, financial contractors. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a consultant basically, right? I'm a uh, one person employee. I have people that work for me, but they're all contractors. Uh, I thought for sure, I'm not going to get anything. And uh, last night, I, uh, along with Carrie, we filled out information to get a um, $10,000, what do you call it? It's not a loan, $10,000. It's an advance. And we'll get to that a little bit. Yeah. But, but my point, we're going to get to it, but I, I want people to know I want people to know if you're an independent contractor or a gig economy and freelancer, there's actually something for you. And I think that's really a key piece because I would say almost 90% of my friends are that on some level. They're speakers, authors, okay. coaches that don't have like, you know, offices. So I think it's really important. And there are some people I know that have restaurants. So keep that in mind. All right, let's start at the beginning. Okay, let's start at the beginning um, real quickly. Let's talk about just the big picture, the big buckets of the loans, Carrie. Okay, so there's two basic programs available, but they kind of cross over and kind of cover each other. Number one, and these are for small business, and if you're an independent contractor, it can easily cover you. If you're an Uber driver or whatever you might be doing uh, in the gig economy, uh, you could very well be covered here. So the first one is the traditional SBA 7A loan program. And the SBA is a, an agency of the federal government, Small Business Administration. It's been around forever. They've been fighting whether to get rid of it or not, but we've got it. And in this instance, when you hear of like tornadoes sweeping through a state or hurricanes, then you hear disaster assistance is available. The SBA is there making loans. Now, when a hurricane blows down your office building or your factory, then you've got physical damage and you're able to sometimes get grants and get long-term loans to rebuild, to replace your equipment. In this case, uh, we didn't have a, a natural disaster. We had an economic disaster. So what they have is the economic injury, uh, EIDL it's called, and that this is the economic injury disaster loan yep that's it okay e eidl and uh, for short and you got to keep these numbers and everything straight so 
First off, uh, you can get a traditional small business loan from the SBA utilizing this program. However, uh, the SBA has dispensed with the need for you to post collateral and the process for application is streamlined. Now, it'll still take a while. You have to submit this through the SBA for now. You might be able to submit it through others later. This is a case of they passed the bill, we found out what's in it, but they're writing regulations as we speak. They're changing websites. You and I, Heather, we were working on a website last night. You actually, in your area, had a different web page than I had. Yeah, it was so weird. He kept saying, I don't see yeah. that. And I'm like, it's right there. And yeah, he actually sent me a screenshot and it was the exact same URL in my URL. And it totally was different. He's in Florida. I'm in Texas. I, I still, we still don't know what, I yeah. have no idea. And, and uh, so my business partner, he's in Michigan. He had yet another one. But, uh, and that's the thing. You need constant information. You need to keep on updating regardless who you go to or what you do, you have to keep checking because these programs are evolving faster than anything I've ever seen the uh, Uncle Sam, the U.S. government do in my 30 years of practicing law. Uh, things generally happen slowly, but they're happening so quickly here. So in this case, when you get an SBA loan, you sign personally for it. Uh, normally, they would require collateral, a mortgage on your home, on your but not now. Like that's not, yeah, that's, that's been dispensed. what do they need now? Yeah. That's all been, what do they need now? So what what they you need now is a halfway decent credit score. Don't know what that number is, but if we go to the FHA loans, of uh, 680, 700s, probably where you got to be somewhere around there, but I'm guessing, I'm guesstimating there. Don't know for sure. I'm just trying to uh, cover from other, other programs. It might very well be lower than that. There's no telling because unlike most of uh, the time when you apply for government benefits, they're trying to figure out a way not to give them to you. They're trying to exclude you. Do you fall into exclusions? This, remarkably enough, Heather, is the exact opposite. They are looking for ways to give you this money. And look, you might be in a position where you've got some savings, where you've got some reserves, but you don't know how long this disaster is going to last. And I recommend that anybody who, who has any chance of qualifying immediately go and at least get the $10,000 grant. And if you qualify for more of it and they send you the money and then you don't need it, there's no prepayment penalty. So send the money back to them. But if this lasts into the summer, you know, the, the whole, uh, uh, but yeah, yeah. So let's just keep going on the loans, right? Yeah. So first okay. of all, you do not need a credit score for that loan. Let, you said credit, you do not need a good credit score for that $10,000 economic loan disaster loan. Let's be clear. And sure. from what I understand, and you've been reading it, so please let us know that it says loan, but there's but, also in the statute that says it's going to be forgiven. Is that correct? My understanding, and again, this is emerging, is emerging. that it is a grant uh, that is an advance on your eventual 7A loan. If you don't get it, then it's a grant. But again, I don't want to be uh, quoted on that because we just don't know at this point. A lot of it is we think, we believe, but we're not absolutely certain till the regulations come out. But you can pretty much say it says it's a loan advance. It probably is going to be forgiven if you don't. You got to understand there are between independent contractors and small businesses, there's 45 million potential claimants here. In the bill that was passed, they provided for $10 billion for this loan advance. And somebody did the math and said that's the first 1 million people in who yeah. get, approved, get it. Yeah. I don't know that that's going to be true. My gut feel is they're going to give more. But for now, we have to assume you got to get it in and get it in quickly like you and I did. Yeah, we were, I mean, I was sending messages to friends at midnight last night. They're like, now my get up, just get up. You know, you don't know. We don't know. We, this is all new world, you know? Okay. So economic injury, disaster, loan, loan advance. Again, yeah. from what we understood, read, it is a loan, but it might be a forgiven on taxes. Again, yeah, we emerging don't. conversation. The next one is, um, which one does you actually want to go down? Just let me go through a few other things. Okay. If you've got existing SBA loans, 
Oh, yeah. Borrowed through them already. There is going to be a moratorium on payments, both of principal and interest, I believe, for six months. And you're going to have to contact them and let them know. You can't just stop paying. Uh, you always need to get their approval for that. But basically, regardless of need, there's no need basis here. You don't have to prove, like, you go in for welfare, you have to prove need that you qualify. There's no requirement here for need. You just have to either, one, have less than 500 employees or uh, be asking for less than $10 million. And then you, you check the boxes and they're promising expedited delivery here, Heather. They're promising that when this really gets going, they'll, they'll be able to deliver the money in 24 hours or two to three days, even if it's a week or two. They understand the urgency that so many of you out there are really stretched thin and need help right now. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Silver One Resources is an exploration and development company backed by strategic investors Eric Sprott and SSR Mining. At Silver One's Candelaria Mine Project in Nevada, there is already a historic resource estimated at 127 million ounces of silver, which Silver One is developing and advancing. The company's Phoenix Silver Project, located within the Arizona Silver Belt, is an early stage exploration project on which native silver vein fragments have been discovered near surface. One grab sample assayed an astounding 14,688 ounces per ton. Yes, that's right, ounces, not grams. Silver One has tremendous exploration potential, is extremely leveraged to the price of silver, and is cashed up and poised to increase shareholder value. Silver One trades in New York under the ticker SLVRF and in Toronto under the ticker SVE. To learn more, go to silverone.com. That's silverone.com. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. So one of the things that was interesting when I was going through the process last night and what I'm talking about again is the economic injury disaster loan advance. At the end of it, even Carrie and I were like live together doing it. And we both get like, we're like, this is interesting. It actually asked us for our uh, checking account number and routing. Like get right there. What's the name of your bank yeah. checking? Right. I was like, holy you know, this is interesting. So, um, who knows? We it's only been tw- not even twenty four hours for us. No idea. We're in the same boat you are. You know, I'm a I'm an LLC, right? I'm a, I'm a I'm a company, but I'm really kind of taxed as more of a sole proprietor ish because I'm a Texas LLC with a pass through, um, without having any quote unquote employees, right? So. And I don't know if that's you, that might not be you. I also have been sending all this data to, like I said, a friend of mine who has a huge building that he owns and 40 employees and he's a medical doctor and it's like a whole other world. And he even said, wow, I didn't even know this was existing. Thank you. So there's a lot there. Okay, what do you got next, Carrie? Yeah, and that's why we're doing this because so many of you out there need help but don't even know it's there. Right. Uh, it's been in the media, but it hasn't been played up enough. They were emphasizing the $1,200 and kind of putting the small business help in the background. So then we've got the PPP, that's the Paycheck Protection Program. Now this is administered by the SBA, but they aren't actually taking the loan documents. Uh, The SBA has got pre-approved lenders and generally uh, what they're saying is any credit union or bank will be able to issue these loans. And here's the hazy part, because we know it was passed. I talked to uh, my banker at Citibank today, and she said they're having a meeting on it tomorrow. They have no idea anything about it, but she will have more info then. So uh, I guess we'll probably have to follow up again, Heather. Because this is So I just clicked on... I just clicked on Paycheck Protection Program SBA, and this is how little the information they have. Like, this is like, well, I've got some more info on it. Yeah, we got some more, but like, this is like barely putting a page up. You know what I'm saying? And again, we are talking on Monday, March 30th. These things just passed um, on and Friday. So just you know, you gotta you gotta take that into consideration. And we, like I said, I went to three banks. He went to one two today. I'm, I actually, when I went to my bank today, my, uh, the one that I could get to, there was 
nobody that they wouldn't let me in the doorway. I had to like, I had to talk to my business banker through the teller line. It was very odd. Anyway, I had the pieces of paper that you and I have the document and he didn't know what I was talking about. So I had to pass it through to him, the little, you know, drive through. And he's like, can I keep this? And I was like, yeah, you know, go find out what's happening and let me know. So, you know, we're on the cutting edge of this because guys, you know, it's called money. Let's get it now. Because I know a lot of you guys are kind of hanging back like, well, we'll figure it out. Don't do that. First come, first serve, people. First come, first serve. That's how I'm, that is how I'm viewing this. First in, first gets the money. It's not a guarantee that they're going to have enough. Okay. So you, I hate to put that in that your brain, but it's true. So you got to think like that. Oh, there's uh, some real reasons to have FOMO here because yeah. uh, for one thing, you know, tens of millions of people could conceivably apply for this and they will go through and the people who really, who match all the criteria will get it. But how long is that going to take? It looks to me like this is all going to be done by machines and algorithms, and then they're going to spit back the ones that they can't figure out and individuals, human beings will have to get involved then. So the pay, pay check protection program administered by the SBA, but you will have to go to your local bank or credit union and they will take the paperwork. I believe they'll submit it electronically and you'll kind of go from there. So, so what do they pay for? Well, first thing is it says paycheck protection, uh, your employees. So they will pay two and a half months of their salary up to an annualized rate of $100,000. So anything over a hundred thousand, no, no uh, benefits there. So that comes out to, uh, you know, around $8,300 per month, uh, times two and a half. So it comes out to a maximum of around 23,300 something per employee. So if they're getting 50, let's just say you're paying 4,000 a month, then you will get uh, actually $10,000, two and a half times, times 4,000, 10,000. So that's one aspect of it. In addition, it's going to pay for your rent for two and a half months. As far as we can tell, it appears the magic number is 2.5. So it'll pay rent. It will pay utilities. And don't forget your utilities include your cell phone. It includes your internet in all likelihood. Uh, most professionals have to have internet service. You pay for that. Your electric, your water, your gas, whatever you're paying for through the company, they're going to give you uh, back. So it's two and a half times that. And that could be substantial. Um, okay, so I'm going to do big picture. I have a piece of paper on. I have that document on the screen here, Carrie. So just to get this again, um, it, could, it could be loans could be up to 2.5 times the bar's average monthly cost, not to exceed 10 million. Right. Right. Okay. Exactly. Now notice at the bottom here it says for solo entrepreneurs, business entrepreneurs, independent contractors, self-employed individuals, they have some information here too. So. This is critical for you guys, not just for employers. Yeah, you're going to be covered and you're going to have to come up with some type of documentation to show your payroll. Might be payroll tax returns. It might be just a computer generated uh, census of every employee and their salary. Uh, you're going to have to come up with some type of documentation. Could be your tax return from 2019. Uh, all of these things. And the key is, so here's the uh, interesting part. It's going to run from people employed from February 15th to June 30th. If you keep them employed till June 30th, you don't lay them off, then that amount will turn into a grant. You will not have to pay it back. And that could be a substantial amount of money, substantial savings. So that's something that you need to keep in mind here because the government has made a decision they would rather pay you to keep your employees than have you lay them off to then go collect unemployment insurance and perhaps welfare benefits down the road. Uh, you know, you can argue with the logic, but this is the program that they've come up yeah, with. Yeah. By the way, we're not. Yeah. This this entire video is non right or wrong or political. This is just like what's going on. Yeah. OK. Yeah. yeah, we're, yeah. We're, not even, we're not thinking about that. This is what they've made available 
decision was made. It's very possible there might be additional programs, additional stimulus, but for right now, this is what we have. This is what you have to deal with. And, and you'll see that, that the documentation, oh, so SBA, don't forget, SBA 7A loan program, personal guarantee. In this instance, no personal guarantee. There is no, uh, what was I gonna say? It's non-recourse, means the company goes south, you're not gonna have to pay it. It is strictly an obligation of your corporate entity. And uh, if you don't have one, I don't know how that's going to work exactly. But if you've got an LLC or any formal, formal corporation or partnership, uh, non-recourse and, uh, and it potentially turns into, into a uh, grant. And uh, that's good because it's yeah, not- so this is right here. Will this loan be forgiven? Bars are eligible to have their loans forgiven. How much? And goes into that. Okay, the loan forgiveness cannot exceed the principal. So, Obviously, yeah. It, yeah. So, my our point of this is they're saying the words loans and things like that, but as long as you meet certain criteria, they're looking at forgiving and it could be on your tax returns and things like that. By the way, the new tax date is from April 15th. It's now July, July 15th, 2000, 2020. That just came out the few, last few days. Now, what, one other thing that is good, uh, a lot of you out there don't have employees. You have regular monthly contractors. My producer is a contracted employee. Uh, as long as you've got proof that you paid the person, 1099 statement from last year, or your payments thus far this year, because you know usually payrolls go up, then that you will be able to recover the same 2.5 times the monthly cost, average cost, of that uh, contractor. And that's important because we're in the gig economy and therefore you might not have any employees, but you still can realize a substantial uh, loan slash grant by counting these contractors. Okay. So this is a good point and something that Carrie brought to my attention. She's already brought to y'all's attention, but I want to reiterate, I think it's interesting. We're in new times, but what the government has made a decision is we'd rather give the companies or small business owners money to keep people employed, right? Even if you don't have the revenue to support it, we'd rather have that than have them go on, let's call it the state, you know, or, or um, unemployment or welfare, right? That's, that's the decision they made for their own economic reasons. I think that's really interesting because it's a different mindset, right? And I know for myself that I was taught <laughs> in a way in my life that, you know, you don't ever take money from the government, something like that. You, you've got to get over that if you have that. Um, and this is a great opportunity to make sure that your employees, uh, your contractors, you know, I, I only do contract. I haven't had an employee in 10 years. So uh, this is a really key piece. Okay. So this is also an SBA, right? And again, I just want to reiterate and going back here, I'm just big picture. What we just talked about is they're calling the paycheck protection program. This one is federal and it's backed, it's, it's backed through the Fed and SBA is helping the process and we don't even know how to have this happen yet because as of this moment at five o'clock on March 30th, no one knows yet. Nothing's on the website. It's to be announced. It's an ever-growing conversation. Okay. No forms uh, currently exist no forms. in our knowledge, but I'm sure they're working on them now. I would guess, Heather, by Wednesday, uh, we will have a very good idea. We'll be able to come back and we'll be able to uh, really come up with, uh, be more definitive and more exact on what you need to do to get it. Right, right, exactly. And by the way, this this document I am showing is prepared by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce um, and whatnot. So just know you know where this document is coming from. We did not create it. Okay, got it. All right, so that's there. What's next? Uh, basically, you're going to have to check your state uh, economic oh. development websites. That's pretty much it for those programs. I think we've covered them as well as we can at this particular moment, because uh, like I said, they're literally writing the rules to administer these programs. You've got to understand the way the government works. First, they pass a law telling an agency to do something, and the agency can't just say, okay, we're ready. They actually have to 
publish rules and there's an expedited procedure for emergency rules, which this falls into. Otherwise, it would take six months to get these rules passed because we're in a whole different situation. They're going to be flying through there and they aren't going to be pretty, you know, because they're going to be rushed. There will be mistakes on them. One thing we don't know, Heather, is whether if you apply for payroll uh, protection, whether or not you can actually apply for an a 7A loan. Uh, it's not clear. I don't see anything in the statute that I have read that says no, but I think the SBA will be shedding some light on that because it is very confusing. And you could conceivably have people applying for both and not getting either because they didn't know that they were mutually exclusive. Like I said, the existing 7A loan program has been around forever, uh, disaster assistance loans. What's different here is that you don't actually have to get knocked over by a tornado. It's economic injury. Uh, but, um, you know, there's nothing in that law that ever considered what they would ask you um, when you're going for an SBA loan. Uh, they would require you to get a rejection from a bank already, although not with the disaster ones. They've, they've basically waived that requirement. And then they'd ask you if... It's on the applications. Have you applied for anything else uh, mm -hmm. through the SBA? Here, you're not applying through the SBA. You're going to be applying through a bank. I don't know what their forms are going to look like. So you got to answer truthfully, guys. No matter what you do, whether it's going to mean you don't get it or it delays it, don't say anything but the truth because you might wind up finding that you get nothing because you made one mistake. You didn't know. Uh, my guess is they're going to be very lenient, but I wouldn't uh, throw myself on the mercy of the government to make sure that uh, that you get something that you are fully entitled to, but you didn't dot an I or cross a T. Right. Just honesty is the best policy here, Heather. You have to comply with everything and totally be above board. There's a bunch of questions. Basically, uh, have you killed anyone lately? Um, you know, are you are gambling? You, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're using it for prohibited activities. Like, I guess they don't want uh, drug dealers uh, signing up for this. Oh, so gambling yeah. and, and gambling. sexual businesses. Yeah. Have you had any judgments against you? Have you ever had a company go bankrupt? Uh, there's a host of that's in standard boilerplate in every. I don't place. actually think it asks about business bankruptcy. In fact, I know they didn't. Because yeah. I went to bankruptcy in 09 and that would have to have said yes. And that they didn't have that. But they did ask if you've gone to jail, if you had been convicted, things like that. Yeah. If you were current on your child support. Oh, yeah. Current your child support, they, things like that. Yeah. So they don't want they don't want to subsidize deadbeat dads. Um, so obviously, all of this stuff's public record can be checked yeah. you know, through their computers. Uh, it seems to me that, um, you know, remembering the turmoil that happened with the Obamacare website, we're like 10, 12 years past that now. <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank goodness. And it seems like they've got their act much more together here, but we have to see how the programs actually function in actual practice. That's something that nobody can answer right now. But what you should be doing is my advice, and this is what I told you to do, Heather, and I've done, I went through all of my rent payments, yeah. copied all of the uh, all of the statements. I went through my electric bill, went through my cell phone bill, my cable TV bill. Uh, most of these online bill payments that you make, there will be a section, a summary section there that will show your payments for the past six months. I think that's going to be adequate to bring to the uh, bank and to the uh, to the SBA if they require it. The SBA has got some other forms for their loans. They want to know what your monthly sales were going back three years. They want a, a list of your liabilities, uh, which, you know, it's, it's a little more complicated. There's a few more steps involved. But again, the SBA has streamlined their program as well. So there's a good possibility that that you'll get through with a minimum amount of documentation. Yeah, so him and I went through that and I printed out my uh, electric bill. I, I don't have water here. I printed out my, you know, my at t phone bill, my cable bill, my uh, utilities bill. I printed it all out as the monthly, you know, put a spreadsheet together and said, okay, this is my monthly. 
and then add that 2.5 times. You know what I'm saying? So this is, it sounds simple. And obviously there's going to be some big numbers for some of you guys, obviously. Um, but that's what they're looking at. Like, the ba- the ba- what they call the basics with the payroll. That's what they call the Payroll Protection Act is what they're, mm-hmm. the right Payroll Protection Act yeah. is what they are referring to. I want to show this real quick. So I'm on the website now of SBA. I want to make sure you guys know this. So I'm on um, sba.gov. There's a huge yellow line here that says apply for economic injury disaster. Just click on that. Go through this. This is the one that I was sending to friends of mine who are business owners at midnight and him and I were going through together. Quick little um, tit. T- tip <laughs> that uh, Carrie and I dealt with. Um, we went. I went through this entire thing at the very end. I got an error, and then it looped me and kept getting an error. I and so, yeah, same thing with a friend of mine. So what I here's a tip: open it up in an incognito window in Chrome. Yes. Don't know why. It just for some reason the cookies mess stuff up. So I went through the entire thing. I mean all of it, and then I pressed submit, and it says. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I said air. It said error. Yeah. So I did the same thing in Safari. I could not do it. So I w- switched over to Chrome and it, it went through. Oh, when you get that uh, application for the advance, the $10,000 advance, it will assign you a loan number. I don't remember getting a email back. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Trilogy Metals is a world-class developer in Alaska's Ambler Mining District. The company already possesses 8 billion pounds of copper, 3 billion pounds of zinc, over 1 million gold equivalent ounces, and now over 77 million pounds of cobalt. Trilogy's Arctic project boasts an after-tax net present value of $1.4 billion with a 33% IRR. Trilogy is led by an experienced management team with proven success in discovering and developing projects in Alaska. The company is well capitalized, has no debt, and possesses strong institutional support. Trilogy trades on the New York and Toronto exchanges under the ticker symbol TMQ. To learn more, go to TrilogyMetals.com. That's TrilogyMetals.com. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. I didn't get an email either, so take a picture of that. Take a screenshot of that. I did not get an email with that confirmation. It was a confirmation, yeah. like a confirmation slash account number. So take a screenshot of that. I did, and I did not get an email. So yes, this is all, you know, this thing was busted out probably less than 7, 48 hours ago. Uh, it was remarkable. I've never seen the government working on a website on the weekend other than Obamacare. Uh, right. But I've never seen them uh, do this before. So what they did is pretty impressive and they've got a lot more to do. So you have to keep going back, unfortunately, or stay in touch with people, stay in touch with us. Yeah. And we'll be keeping track of it daily. I promise so you. So what that. we're thinking about doing here is putting together a, um, a Facebook group. But also, more importantly, if you want to raise your hand, if you are a business owner that's way more complicated than a simple contractor, you know, like me or him, if you're looking, you if you have more intricacy, if you're a large company with a gym or a couple of gyms with employees and things like that, and you want to talk to somebody, um, Carrie's available. We have some of you on standby that might be available that can help you through this process. It can actually help you potentially if you want to either consult with you or just have you help you go through the process depending on what you need. So, you know, reach out to us. My name is Heather Haven with Carrie. I will put a link um, in the bottom, possibly your, um, we'll figure it out. We'll try to figure this out. We're going to either put a link at the bottom to go to a scheduler or we'll have to figure it out. So um, we're still working on that, but stay tuned. I'm Heather Havenwood. Uh, it's Carrie Lutz. What's the name of your YouTube channel? Oh, uh, well, the, the website's financialsurvivalnetwork.com. The YouTube channel is FSN Gold and Silver. And uh, just, just to let you know, Heather, we talked about it. You know, I kind of got into this after the crash of 08, 09. What's happening now? Yeah, it's a surprise that it was brought on by COVID-19, a pandemic. But the fact that it's happening, it was destined to happen almost from the beginning. And 
we said, uh, me and numerous guests on the show, that this crash, this collapse would be far worse than 08, 09, and it, thus far it has not disappointed. I'm not bragging, I'm just saying that this isn't a surprise and kind of been waiting for it, waiting for that other shoe to drop. So that's why you really need to get what you can here, really spend it wisely, and and do the best you can to just to survive, because sometimes surviving is all you can do. Yeah. And, and with that said, I just want to share, and many, many of y'all know my story, but I uh, lost everything in the OA crash. I mean, I lived out of my car. Um, I uh, my, lost my house. Um, I bankruptcy, foreclosure, the whole nine yards. Um, no idea what would happen. I, and one thing that I didn't do, and because I didn't have anyone around me to help me, I didn't ask for assistance at all. I didn't ever, never ask the government for one penny. And why? I don't know. Pride, didn't understand it, lost, uh, don't know how that works. Just a lot of fear and ignorance at the same time going on. Um, so, you know, this time is different. You know, I think there is a lot of people out there. I was taught, you know, I don't know why, but for some reason, my parents were like, you never do that. You never take money from the government. I don't know where that came from, but that's, get over that. This is ridiculous. So this is the time to say, hey, I need help. This is okay. I need help. I'm drowning here or I might be drowning or I'm drowning. You know, just don't give up. There are resources out there. We want to help you. I don't want anyone that I had to go through what I had to go through, which is lose everything. It was actually horrible. I spent four years living in and out of my car on people's couches. And it's never anything that I highly suggest or want anyone to do. But this time around, I am aware enough to say, what's happening, pivot, mm -hmm. what do I need to do? You know, I was, like I said, we we're on the phone last night pretty late. You know, I'm willing to do whatever I have to do because I was at the, I was at the bank this morning, 930 in the morning. I was the first one there. I'm like, Hey, they didn't know what to do with me. They're like, what do you do with you? So I, I literally talked to my banker through the telecom because they're not allowed a lot of people in. So I was like, hi, you know, it was really kind of whole new world in the rain, by the way, I'm in the rain talking to my banker through the little telecom because mm. the drive through they want not let people in. And I, I'm, I'm pulling this towards me. You should do it too. Don't let you think that, well, I'm too small. I only make $80,000 a year, small business consulting gig economy. You're not too small. You got to survive too. Well, and you're you part of it. this economy. You got to do it. And we're all in this together. Yeah. And yeah. for once the government is acknowledging Last time, Heather, you remember, they said, oh, the Wall Street uh, Titans. Wall Street, Wall Street, yeah. Wall Street. And uh, the common person like you and I just twist in the breeze. The only thing yeah. we, that was available to me that I didn't do was welfare. And, you know, and I, because I think probably for me, it was like, oh my God, welfare. Like it just felt like a stamp of a scarlet A or something. I should have done it. I could have. Again, it was just my mindset. Don't think that way. This time is different. They are giving to the, the economy. They're giving to you and I. They're giving to Main Street. They're giving to the gig economy. They're giving. They're giving. Don't be one of those people that say, I'm, I don't know, whatever you're saying. We're in this together. Yeah, and you owe it to your family yeah. and to your partners. If you're in partnership with the uh, people in business, your employees, all of them are counting on you to okay. take funds and put them to the proper use. I mean, you know, it's not just you. You might be happy to close your business, but you've got people counting on you, mouths to feed. And that's why you need to do this. It's not, hey, look, I never took a penny from the government in my life. They took plenty from me over the years. And my feeling is now, who knows how long this is going to last? You don't know. You might think you have adequate reserves, but you don't. I mean, my, my kids, my daughter's company laid off 30% of the people, 3.2 million unemployment claims filed last week alone. And if you're a principal in the company, you generally can't collect unemployment in a lot of states. So remember that. And oh, also, you know, one other thing I forgot to mention, Heather, is medical insurance. Also, you can, uh, you can put that in your list. Oh, well. that's right. That's right. In your list of things going back onto the SBA, I don't know, the, the Payment Protection Act, yeah, you payroll. can put in their medical insurance as a line item along with uh, uh, overhead rent or mortgage, um, utilities, water, cable bill, phone bill, like the utilities. That is considered 
one of the line items. Yes. Yeah. And that could be a big one. That could be a big one. You know, there could be several thousand dollars that you'll get back that yeah. uh, otherwise you're going to have to pay it because you're not going to go without insurance if you got it now in all likelihood. So that's an important feature too. I'm sorry I neglected that. Should we give them an email address, uh, Heather? to uh, contact uh, us? No, at the, no, because what I'll do is I'll put in the bottom of, this is a YouTube uh, video, or I'll put this on Facebook. In here, I will put down some links um, that we will put a form or um, whatnot, because I don't want to do one email and then, so I'll, I'll put a website. You're gonna get inundated and uh, it'll start throwing all the emails into spam. Right. It, I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. We'll send a link and maybe a form or a Google form. So just watch that and um, just stay, you know, stay with us. I'm on Facebook, of course, and so is Carrie Lutz and uh, YouTube. I'm going to be uploading this to my channel, Heather Havenwood, as well. So uh, check us out. I hope this is helpful. Please share this with anybody who is like, in the gig economy. That means your Uber driver. Okay, seriously. That means anyone that you know that is in the gig economy as well as the entrepreneur. I mean, I sent this last night, 10 o'clock at night to my boxing guy. He owns this beautiful, wonderful gym here in Austin. And I, I was sending him all these links at 10 o'clock at night. And he was like, thank you. I had no idea this was available. And I've had to close my gym for the first time in 25 years. I'm like totally overwhelmed, you know? And I'm like, yeah, and this guy's great. He's a great businessman. Um, so uh, he's like, I had no idea. My, I, he's like, I just got the phone with my lawyer and accountant. Neither one of these, we, neither one of them even knew these links were available. I just sent them to them. You know, you got to be able to share right now. So, and this is the cutting edge. I mean, this is, yeah, we're on the cutting edge of this moment. at this moment in a, in a half hour, we might not be anymore, <laughs> but for right now, this is the latest, most current information. I'm not giving you legal advice. I'm a retired attorney, as I like to say, a recovering attorney, but I think I've fully recovered, but you know, education, that's the key information. That's how we all get through this. Yeah. And I'm a recovering 2008 person. <laughs> that's my only claim Still to fame. <laughs> Still recovering from that. Um, okay, guys, uh, talk to you soon and make sure you follow the links in the YouTube channels. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.